The global pandemic is driving the biggest online expansion in years. Cloud computing has enabled companies to increase capacity, speed, and performance to continue operating through this unprecedented crisis. Mega Kumar heads software and cloud services research at International Data Corporation Canada. She is an expert in technology adoption. We're glad she could be here to share her insights today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Sharon. Thank you for having me. For many business leaders, digital transformation was on the radar, but the pandemic made it urgent. How critical are cloud services for digital transformation? So cloud services um, actually help organizations uh, drive innovation in um, different ways. One is uh, the fact that they give organizations access to new and improved functionalities that, may, that they might not have had previously, right? And, um, you know, during this pandemic, I think we have seen a lot of retailers leverage cloud services in terms of making sure they have an e-commerce presence, for example, right? Uh, we've seen banks actually leverage uh, cloud services and other innovation technologies in their back end to improve customer ex experience and engagement. So that, that is one way cloud services can be utilized. The other way is that cloud services also gives organizations access to um, different types of codes and APIs. Um, so, for example, you can actually go towards a hyperscaler marketplace and get different kinds of APIs and functionalities that you can um, deploy or where you can utilize the uh, code and build on top and actually deploy within your organization. Now, the thing is that that is one way of sourcing innovation. And then the other aspect is that it also gives your developers access to different types of tools that they might uh, need or the, they might need to utilize to actually engage in innovation, right? Or develop those functionalities. But that being said, um, I don't want to give everyone this impression that cloud is only limited to developers or the tech savvy folks in the world. Um, increasingly, a lot of the cloud providers or are our software providers are making low-code, no-code uh, development tools accessible, whereby even business users can actually develop functionalities for their different uh, business teams, right? So uh, they get access to a variety of functionality over there. And the last part is that it is not just about sourcing innovation. Uh, what we've seen is that quite a few large Canadian organizations, when they have actually innovated, Utilizing the cloud, they actually release the code uh, into uh, places like GitHub, for example, so that other organizations can actually leverage uh, the innovation that they have created and adopted for their organization as well. And this whole sourcing and developing and distribution of innovation is what we at IDC term as the digital innovation supply chain. And what we see as being the future of digital innovation when we are in the next normal. Well, where are Canadian organizations at, at the adopt, on the adoption of software as a service and what are the benefits that they are harnessing? So now cloud has uh, three types of uh, deployment models. So we have software as a service, we have platform as a service and infrastructure as a service. Now uh, together, all three of them combine to become public cloud services um, and I think as of the end of 2019, um, the Canadian public cloud services market was valued at 6.67 billion Canadian dollars, right? With nearly 70% of that actually coming from software as a service alone. And the trend towards software as a service adoption is that it's been twofold. On one hand, we see a lot of organizations going ahead and investing in software as a service because they want to augment existing workloads. They want access to new types of functionalities immediately, right? So you see them augmenting existing workloads. What our research has shown is that the more experience organizations have with software as a service, they go ahead and replace the on-premise solution with a cloud alternative altogether. In some cases, the adoption of software as a service has been, um, as we've uh, spoken about before, accelerated due to the pandemic. People have realized that they need to be able to run their organization in a digital manner where their teams can access the applications anytime and anywhere in a safe and secure manner. 
And I think this is another factor that is uh, that has accelerated the adoption of SaaS, especially within this year. What are some of the challenges faced by organizations when it comes to cloud services? Well, there can be a few challenges uh, that organizations can face when it comes to cloud services, and uh, but uh, maybe I'll touch upon uh, two or three of them. I think one of the biggest terms that you hear when it comes to challenges to cloud services in the past would be around security. Uh, there would be this pushback saying that cloud is not really secure enough for our organization, so should we really be adopting it? But increasingly, has Canadian organizations have matured in their understanding of cloud. Um, security has actually become the biggest driver for adoption because a lot of companies have started to realize that it is within the vested interest of the hyperscalers to ensure that the cloud environment is secure, to ensure that your data is secure when you're utilizing it within the cloud. But at the same time, I think a lot of organizations also need to understand the notion of shared responsibility when it comes to utilizing cloud services. That is having a clear understanding as to what are the security controls and processes that are gonna be followed by the hyperscaler or your cloud services provider? And what are the security process and controls you would have to apply for, your, uh, for the data that you're going to move on to the cloud? So I think a lot of organizations need to achieve that balance, more important uh, than Anna. The second challenge that organizations usually face is around skills. As you become an organization that it, um, or as you mature in your adoption of cloud, you need access to the right kind of skill sets. People um, having the right team in place to ensure that your cloud is being managed properly. Because bear in mind that organizations are not going to lean towards just a single cloud provider. They're going to have to deal with multiple cloud providers. So you need to have the right skill sets in place that are going to ensure that all these applications are going to be managed properly across these different clouds, right? And at the same time, by having the right kind of skills, you're also going to ensure that you are able to sustain the right kind of operational expense that you want to have within your organization. Now, the third part uh, that I would think is also challenges, organizations um, need to uh, do a bit of homework on their end, especially around ensuring that the right kind of data goes onto the cloud, right? It is um, not going to be practical to move every data point that exists within your organization to the cloud, especially if you're an extremely large organization. So you probably want to engage in data classification and understand what is, uh, which data sets are going to continue staying on premise, which data sets are going to move on to public clouds, uh, public clouds, and maybe some of these data sets are going to be in hybrid clouds, right? And hybrid clouds is um, the type of environment that we see as IDC becoming increasingly prevalent across all organizations. Certain amount of data is going to be on public clouds, and within that same application, certain amount is going to stay on premise. So you get to have, in a way, a best of both worlds. Well, as you stated in a recent article, organizations realize they need to leverage the best practices from this pandemic and ensure they can adapt and scale operations when needed. Mega Kumar, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much.